Hi everyone, it's been an interesting few weeks. So I was on a video call with six kinesiologists from Australia, all very experienced ladies, and through the lockdown, they have been doing 100% distant healings. So not with a client on the table, like I use my surrogates, Alison, Blaze and Shelby. This was people just doing purely etheric balancing which when if you saw my video a few days ago where i was showing what i do with the stacking with my legs i actually uh one of one of you guys gary gary's a uh, one of the long-term watchers on new leaf and i actually threw his energy into the mix because i thought well i might as well throw in it throw gary in since he's uh on my list of people that i need to do a surrogate balance for so anyway uh but Gary actually felt a lot of what I was doing. Now, I'm not sure what that's about. And obviously this seems to be what my fellow kinesiologists are doing. So funnily enough, my friend Alice is having a really bad time at the moment. So I thought that I would do an etheric balance on Alice and see whether she feels it. Now she doesn't even know I'm doing this. So I'm just sort of curious and I'm just playing with energy and I know this seems a bit weird and but that's okay, I'm willing to be weird out there for the sake of working something else out for myself. Because this isn't what I normally do. I love working on human beings, I love working on people, but what I would like you to do is imagine we've got Alice lying on the table, head here, feet here, and I'm going to do a little brain, just a few minutes of brain pickup because I want to see whether or not she can feel some relief or energy. The whole narcissistic family that she's got going on has been playing havoc with her. And when Alice gets unwell, she gets everything. It, you know, she gets migraines, she gets, she gets headaches, she gets diarrhea, she gets uh, depressed, she gets anxious, she just gets the whole thing. So she's all constantly on this roller coaster of depression, anxiety, insomnia, uh, you know, so it's just a constant, constant realm of pain in her world. And we all know you've got to get narcissists out of our life, but some of us aren't strong enough to do it at that point. So anyway, so here goes. So see, I'm stacking it in. So I'm just going to stack in Alice's energy in the head, in the heart. Okay, tap over a heart. Just relaxing the energy. Let's shimmy some energy along that central meridian. Okay. Okay, let's put in a balance. I choose not to be a pawn in narcissists games. I choose not to be a pawn in narcissists games. Okay. So let's see where we need to go. So I'm gonna just, yeah. So adrenal survival, deep survival, hidden deep survival, celestial circuit. So the first thing showing up is celestial circuit. So top and bottom of the central meridian, top and bottom of the governing meridian. But now I'll do it on Alice's etheric. Okay, so is it on the left? Is it's on the right? It's on the right. So the right side of her body is out of balance. Energetically, she's off to the right because the right side is the masculine energy and it's about doing everything. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in her world at the moment. So this is just the best technique. This will just be going through some pulsing, pulsing points. Uh, so the best technique is a bioenergetic reset process that uh, I learned with Dr. Charles Krebs many years ago when he was developing the LEAP program. And when he talked about the energetic healing on the celestial circuit, I think we were the first ever class down in Melbourne who learned it, I've been using it ever since.
actually, since I can for the first time, this is the first time I've ever done what I'm about to do. So what I'm doing is running the central meridian, but the governing meridian starts at the tailbone, goes up the spine and in underneath the roof of the mouth. Because I've got her energetic body here, I'll just run the central meridian as well. Beautiful. Okay, stacking in. Okay, that's better. Where do we need to go to next? So do I need to go unconscious, subconscious, conscious? So I need to go and help some of the conscious pathways in the brain work a little better. So let's have a look where I need to go. So corpus callosum trust. So, her, so trust has totally shut down the left and right sides of the brain. So in relation to trust and trust issues. Going into the amygdala. Yeah, her brain would rather run away than even try to think about trusting her family. She's been let down over and over and over again. So why would you go back there again? Trust and trust issues. Okay, that's better. So where else do I, do I need to go? Okay, so corpus callosum, trust, anterior commissure. So the next one showing up is anterior commissure. So that's the energy going to the frontal cortex where we do our problem solving. And once again, it's escape submission freeze in the amygdala. So her brain wants to run away rather than problem solving. The problem is because the narcissists in her family don't allow her to get out of doing the problem solving, she does all of the work for none of the reward. Which of course is how narcissists work. Okay, so central and once again running that governing meridian as well. Governing uh, moves energy through the unconscious brain Central meridian is energy in the conscious brain. Okay, what next? So corpus callosum, trust, anterior commissure. Okay, so the next one is the anterior commissure again, but this time commissure in relation to sadness, despondency, depression. And amygdala. Okay, so that one's uh, frustration, rage, anger, which is funny because it's showing up sadness, depression, de sorry, sadness, depression, despondency in relation to the anterior commissure, and yet it's rage, anger. Now, I don't know if you know this, but basically by the time we're getting depressed, quite often we're so angry with ourselves for putting up with something, that depression's just how we feel. We feel flattened and exhausted and unable to get on with our lives. So it's rage, anger, frustration, creating that depression that's stopping the ability to problem solve. And I think that's why Alice's body just goes into these massive places where she can't get out of bed. She's got the migraines. But I've watched her through three bullying workplaces in the last 25 years, where one by one, she has become the scapegoat for all of this bad stuff that's happened in these places and she's just traumatized and exhausted and unable to move forward with her life. And she needs the narcissists out, you know, she knows it, she knows it, but she needs the narcissists out of her life and you know, that's not gonna happen when they're family. But because she hasn't sorted out the issues with her family narcissists, obviously she keeps attracting other narcissists into her world who, uh, who you know, it's almost like feeling at home. When you've been abused your whole life, you attract people who give you more of the same because that's what your little unconscious two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, year old self feels comfortable with. Okay, next part of the brain. Uh, CC trust, AC response, amygdala, pillow, A, B, C. Uh, oh, okay. The third hippocampal circuit. Right, so this one. Uh, 
put in the hippocampus. Now the third one is about uh, survival patterns. So I use some formatting here on my fingers. So that's all of the sensory. It's a sensory nervous system affecting the way we lay down memory. Okay, so. Um, okay, so the first one showing up is CV8. That's the belly button. And in this circuitry, CV8 is about danger and survival patterns. Okay, do we need to couple it with another one? Yeah, we do. Okay, so we need to couple it with kidney one on the bottom of the feet. It's in this little point in the center. So basically the belly button and the center of the kit on the feet is to do the feet in this circuitry are about the brain knowing that everything's crap and your nervous system's assuming that everything's of life or death importance. So because we're stuck in survival, our brain knows that if we let our guard down, we're about to get eaten by a tiger. Yeah, and that's an old pain and punishment circuit. It's the only way her body knows how to survive. <sighs> Central meridian, governing meridian. Okay, we need a next layer on the uh, hippocampus. So stack in these little guys again. What's next? Right. Hand on the navel for Alice. Yeah, right. Okay, so hand on the navel in this circuitry is to do with old patterns, so not current patterns. So she's got the current survival stuff going on. This is old survival stuff. So firstly, old and CV8, the belly button. So in other words, this is a learnt pattern that her brain can go into whenever she's feeling unsafe, like the narcissists are gonna get their pound of flesh from her. Okay, so central governing, central governing, which are the two meridians that make up the celestial circuit. I'll just shimmy that figure eight energy above the torso. So once again, okay, reticular activating system. So this is the little spot behind the brain stem. So there's spots up here on the face I need and also spots behind the skull, as well as down through here. Right, so there's three choices initially. Yeah, so the serotonin spots have been switched off. Yeah, and that's creating vigilance in the nervous system. So as you know, vigilance is about waiting for the next thing to go wrong. So when our nervous system is vigilant, uh, it can make us do things like, it can switch down our thyroid energy, it switches on our adrenals, it can slow down our immune function, it can shut down our conscious brain from being able to make sensible decisions. It can basically make it so that life's pretty bloody miserable for us and that's not a good thing. So, uh, because the brain is deliberately switching off the serotonin so that we stay vigilant and alert and switched on. Okay, so once again, I'll, there's often a second RAS circuit. I'll just have a look. Okay, so, okay. So she's also got acetylcholine running, so. Ah. So the acetylcholine, that's the one that's like the triple shot of coffee. So it's like that burst of adrenaline that gets you going, but at which of course you can imagine what that does to the gut. So uh, no wonder her gut is one of the first things to be affected. Alice has several autoimmune conditions as well. And because she's been so abused by workplaces in the past, there's not a lot of trust and faith out there that the universe is in any way kind or reputable or... In fact, I sent her a text message this morning saying, 
bloody universe, what the hell did you do to deserve this? And she said, I know, she's really picking on me. Anyway, okay. So once again, is there another rest circuit? No, okay. Once again, CC trust, AC to sponsor me, D for E, A, B, C, D, power work, and then the rest, P, G, P, A, T, P, G. Ah, okay, so I'm gonna do a couple of little um, integration areas. So we'll see which ones show up. So first one's brokers. Okay, so brokers, air, yeah, okay. So it's in escape. So the brokers is the words coming out of your mouth. So the actual word, and you can imagine the logical side of the brain, it's about the logic of the words coming out of your mouth, but on the right side, it's the emotions of the words coming out of your mouth. Now, one of the things with Alice is that her entire life, she's felt like people don't hear her, but she's very good at expressing herself, and she's very clear, but people ignore her, and it's like they just uh, trample all over her because she... I suppose she says no, but she does it anyway. So because she says no and does it anyway, people learn that that's her behavior. So even though she says, I don't have time, I can't, I won't, they go, yeah, you will. And she does. So that's uh, a challenge. And it's a challenge when you've been the abused little kid from, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 10, 11, 12, you know, and onwards, who has been the doer and the supporter and the person you know, going through things. It's hard to change those patterns. Okay, so that's brokers. Okay, so now going on to the next one, Wernickes. Yeah, so Wernickes, this is all, this is escape submission freeze. So Wernickes is the thought behind the words. So on those days when we just have a big, blah, you know, and you just get stuff off your chest. Sometimes we don't come out so eloquently or we can't speak our truth the way that we would like to. So, okay, so this is the thoughts behind the words. So if our thoughts aren't clear, how can the words coming out of our mouth be clear? Just double checking uh, the connection between Wernicke and Brokers. Yeah, right. So even between there, you, the brain doesn't want to connect the two. So maybe because she's in uh, fight and flight for so long, her brain doesn't want her speaking her truth because in the past it's never done her any favours, potentially. So, yeah, so there's actually something going on there. Okay, so the third one back is the auditory integration points back here. That's going up around her skull. Okay, uh, this one's a pain and punishment circuit. So this is auditory integration points. So it's how we hear, comprehend. It's how we work out what we need. It's, uh, it's the self-talk. And obviously on days when we're having a bad day, you know, our self-talk. I read a book called Feel the, Feel, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, like 25, 30 years ago by uh, Susan Jeffers. And it's just a simple little book if you can get a hold of it. And basically, one of the things that she said is on a bad day, we can have 100,000 negative thoughts. Now, your brain believes what you tell it. So if you're having a bad day, you know, it's like you've got to get happy, happy stuff on TV. You've got to play some good quality music that will calm your brain down. You've got to do some things you know, meditate, yoga, anything that increases your good vibrations and calms down that negative, negative vibration. Okay, now, let me just double check that. That's good. And the last one is the uh, rip and lip, left and right integration points. Yeah, okay, so that one's rage, anger, frustration. So the rip and lip are left and right integration points. So they are how we lay down information in our, from everything we see and hear into our short-term and long-term memory 
but also how we access that information. Now, when our brain has the serotonin switched off, even if you have a healthy, happy day, your brain is laying down that healthy, happy day in a negative part of your brain because your brain doesn't know where the hell to put it. So quite often, you know, we need, we're looking at things through these cracked glasses instead of the rosy glasses simply because of the hormones whizzing through our body telling our nervous system that everything's damaging, everything's painful, everything's unsafe, everything's damaging. Now what I'm going to do is check all eight of them together. Yeah, so an old pain and punishment circuit told her nervous system it's not safe to integrate information. Information's just damaging, information's just, it equates to pain. There's another escape submission freeze layer there. So the brain just wanting to escape. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, we know what you need to do. This is a new program for Alice's body now and in the future. The old program for Alice's body is no longer necessary now in the future. Hallelujah and amen. Okay. So I'll let you know how Alice went with that. And I hope that wasn't too weird. That's the first time I've ever done that. So glad to be uh, here with you today in sort of a, a little experiment of mine going on at the moment with new stuff and once again everything weird out there in the world at the moment I think we're waking up there's stuff going on I think uh, having more tools in your toolbox to get through life at the moment is a very very good thing take care talk to you all soon